What's up guys? So for today's video, I'm going to be talking to y'all about how you can start making really tons of money with what feels like minimum effort, honestly, by buying, fixing, and selling uh, small engine machines. Now, when I say small engine, what I mean is, you know, go-karts, ATVs, dirt bikes, lawnmower, pressure washer, and anything that runs off that typical, you know, usually between 6 to 12 horsepower engine. So for myself, this is something I started doing when I was a freshman in high school, I think. Uh, and really, it just snowballed from there. It kind of turned into a hobby for myself. It's something I did all through high school and even through a lot of college just because I enjoyed doing it so much. And for myself, it just started off with, you know, a couple hundred dollar investment on a go-kart that I bought real cheap. I spent maybe like 50 bucks fixing it up and I sold it almost immediately. And I thought to myself, wow, this is really an easy way and beats the hell out of waiting on tables or anything like that. So for this video, I'm going to take you through what I would say are the four main steps that you need to follow if you want to be successful in this whole buy, fix, repair, sell, um, you know, business. Uh, I'll also tell you where the best places are to find these kinds of projects, uh, to find parts, what the typical problems are, things like that. So stay tuned. So the four main steps that you're going to need to know for buy, fixing, and selling these small engine machines are one is research. Second would be buying, going to actual physical, you know, seller and inspecting it and handing the money. Two, uh, of course, fixing it, knowing what parts you're going to need, where you can find them, things like that. And then four, of course, and the best part, selling it, making your money. But before we even get into those four steps, first thing I think you need to know to do is where to look and really what you should be looking for. So in my experience, the easiest place to find projects like the small engine stuff to work on, uh, one, of course, and you've probably already guessed it, would be Craigslist. So log on, go to the ATV, go-kart, off-road section, whatever it's called, uh, look for projects. Another one would be Facebook Marketplace. I found tons of go-karts and lawnmower projects there. And then another one also on Facebook would be join your local buy sell trade groups that you have around where you live. Uh, a lot of times you'll find people selling you know broken stuff and you can find projects there really easily. Now what you need to be looking for when you're on these sites and you're looking for projects and really if you're just starting out and you're looking for something really easy and, and it's going to be easy to sell I would recommend buying go-karts. They're super easy to find because you know parents are selling them. And as soon as something wrong, something wrong, you know something breaks, whatever, they're selling it. You know parents are buying them too. They're always buying them for the kids, so you know there's someone out there looking for it. But in terms, and this is just for go karts, what you need to be looking for. Uh, usually, you want to look for something that's two seater and it has seat belts because that's what parents want. Look for something that has suspension on it. Because a lot of times, you're not whoever's going to be buying this doesn't live in the city, so they're going to want something that they can drive off road in the sand, whatever, wherever you live at. Um, so look for those things. And really, the sweet spot in terms of price for where you want to be looking at, uh, I would say anything between it's usually 200 to 450 bucks is what you want to be looking for. Because normally, when you're selling these things, they're going to sell them for like 800 bucks. Plus, depending on how nice of a go-kart you're able to get. Um, but other than go-karts, other great projects that are really easy to fix would be like, one, lawnmowers. If you can find one that's really cheap, like I bought one for 50 bucks and sold it for like 500 bucks, you know, with just replacing a battery and the carburetor, I think, super easy. Other than that, there's like pressure washers. Those are super easy to work on because it's, it's, you can lift it up and put it on a table. It's super easy. Um, ATVs, those are something fun. ATVs and dirt bikes, I would say if you can get a really good deal on it, go ahead and get it. But those honestly are not as easy to sell as you might think because it's a much more limited amount of people looking for them. A lot of times parents aren't buying ATVs for the kids because you can't, you know, you can't put a seatbelt on something like that, or an ATV or a dirt bike. But if you can get a really good deal on it, someone out there is, is going to buy it. If you can buy it cheap, and you can still sell it, you know, 
a lot cheaper than anything else they're going to find online, I'd say go ahead and go for it. But that's what you want to be looking for if you're looking to start this whole buy, fix, sell, you know, flipping small engines thing. All right, so step one, research. So let's say you've gone on to Craigslist and you found a project. Uh, for this video, we're just going to say go-kart because that's going to be really what you want to find. Those are the best projects and the easiest to fix and sell. So let's say you found this go-kart. So first things first is, you, of course, you're going to be talking to the seller. Figure out what's really wrong with it. Um, you want to ask them questions like, was it working when you parked it last? Um, is there still oil in it? Things like that. Figure out the condition of the project. Um, if it looks good just from the pictures and whatever you found out from the seller, uh, go ahead and do a little bit of research online. See if you know there's another one like it for sale somewhere around. See what's being sold for. Uh, make sure you can find parts for it. If it's a go-kart, I, I guarantee you can find parts for it. Um, so those are some things you want to look at when you're doing research. And that kind of snow well, rolls us into step two, which would be actually buying it. So now you, you're going to pull the trigger on it. You're going to this person's house to check it out and see what it's really about. And a couple of things that I think you want to look out for whenever you're inspecting the project is take your time. Don't feel rushed like this person that's going to be selling it is going to be out there with you showing it. But take all the time you need to look at it. And a couple of things you should always check for is one, make sure there's still oil in it. And also make sure there isn't water mixed in with the oil because that's just a whole other box of problems that you don't want to get into. It's just going to end up being a money pit. <laughs> so look for that. Uh, two, make sure the engine isn't frozen. So make sure you can either spin it by hand or if it's a pull string, make sure you can pull it and the engine's going to turn over. Uh, and even better, if it's electric start and the battery still works, see if you can turn the key and get it to spin. That's a really good sign if you can do that. Um, and another thing, kind of sub part of that, if it has electric start, whatever this is you're looking at, if it's a go-kart, um, I think a good thing to get would be like a jumper box or have a, a good battery with you or if you can get your truck or whatever you're driving close enough to it to where you can jump it, that would be great. That way you can test and see if it's going to turn over. You can even check for spark if you're, you know, if you're willing, you know. But even if it doesn't have spark, it's usually not a big problem. We'll get into that later. Um, but those are something, some things that you, you really want to check for whenever you're looking at it. And then of course, you know, give it the visual inspection. You want to check for tires, see if they're all flat, because a lot of times you can either get a tube for it, or you can they sell you know that green goop for fix a flat. You can usually pump some of that in there because it's just thorns and stuff that they've been driven over and they've gone flat over time. So you want to check that. Uh, check seats, see how, you know, if they're torn, stuff like that. Check seat belts, make sure all that stuff works. Uh, if it happens to be a go-kart that has, say, forward, neutral, and reverse, you know, check that, make sure it works. You just give it everything. Look through it all. Even make sure, you know, steering wheel turns, you know. Stuff like that gets frozen up if it's left out in the weather for like a year, you know, a long time. And of course, you know, this is something you should probably be doing when you're actually, you know, texting the person about it, seeing if you want to buy it or not. Uh, is kind of get the background of whatever this is. So ask them, you know, one, why isn't it working or what happened? Was it working when you parked it last? Um, you know, how old is it? Stuff like that. You know, ask what they used it for, things like that. If it's a go-kart, well, duh, their kids drove it probably. But, you know, just those are a few things you want to keep in mind when you're looking at these projects. That leads us to step three, and the favorite, well, one of my favorite parts is fixing it. So these are, act, this is the time you're going to be logging, you know, in your garage or wherever the heck you're working on this at, you know, turning the wrench, fixing whatever it is. And some tips I want to give you, well, one, nine times out of ten, if you're buying a go-kart that isn't working, uh, it's something that they parked at the end of the summer one year, you know, maybe they covered it, maybe they didn't. But they went out, you know, months later, say it's the beginning of spring, they want to try and start it again, and it doesn't work. They'll turn it over, but it won't fire. And that's going to happen most of the times for these projects. And what that means is someone left the gasoline in the go-kart or whatever project this is for months, of, for, you know, all winter, and, you know, it gummed up either the tank, the lines, or most likely the carburetor, 
more specifically that it gums up the pilot's ejects that are inside the carburetor. Now what you want to do with that is you can clean it yourself, but a lot of times with these really small parts that they have, you know, it's not going to be 100% clean. Or you could buy a repair kit, but that's like almost 20 bucks. And what I did every time, you know, this is what you should probably do, is go on eBay or Amazon, uh, type in your engine model and horsepower or, you know, make and model, whatever information you have on it, and you can just buy a new carburetor. It's easy. It's like maybe $25 for a carburetor. All you gotta do is take the old one off, put a new one on, boom. Nine times out of ten, you can sell it right out the door like that because it's gonna start right up. But other things that you should probably be looking for um, in terms of electronics on a lot of these new go karts, you know, you know, 2015 to now probably, uh, what's this like electronic ignition stuff they have? The CDI will, will probably go out on a lot of these. So if it's a project. Like a go kart was sitting out in the sun, you know, for months and months through winter and spring, all that stuff. Um, these little black boxes there is what the CDI is. It'll get really hot, and the electronics inside will break. Now, luckily, again, these parts are pretty cheap. You can go on eBay and find these things for like 15 bucks, probably. It's super cheap. So, the, <clears throat> those are two things you're probably going to be repairing a lot. And in my case, yeah, nine times out of ten, you're gonna replace these two things. It's gonna work, and you can sell it easily. So you buy it for you know, 200, 450 bucks, and then boom, you sold it for 850, and only had to put like a couple of hours of work in, maybe. It's super easy. Um, but always, you know, make sure you fix anything that needs to be fixed on it. You know, if the seat doesn't slide forward and back, you know, maybe it's a little rusted up. Look into fixing that. You know, clean it up, of course. Make sure tires can hold air because people are going to want to buy something that they're going to be able to just take home, put some gas in it, and give to their kids to, to play with, you know, to drive around. So make sure it's ready to go. And, you know, a lot of these things are just going to be really small, minor stuff like greasing up things, you know, putting a new spark plug in it. Make sure the oil is good in it because they're going to want to check that. Make sure all the fuel system's clean, and that's really just replacing the carburetor. And making sure the fuel line is clean, so blow some air through it, you know, check it, things like that. But really, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't take no time at all to do all of these things. So that's really the whole summary of the whole fixing section of what you need to know. So for the last step, uh, <laughs> this is the money maker, selling it. So first things first you want to do is one. You're going to want to take some pretty sweet pictures of whatever you got because uh, you're going to want to put it on, I'd say in my recommendation is cross post it, put it on Craigslist, put it on Facebook Marketplace or any of those buy sell trade groups that you join. You want to reach as many people as you can with what you're trying to sell. And that's crucial. So take pictures of it. You know, people are going to be asking you questions if they're interested. So know what to, you know, know what you need to know about your project, you know. Tell them that you replaced all these parts and tell them everything that's new about it and all the selling points, things like that. But again, we're going to loop back around to kind of that first step, which is research. So make sure you know what you're going to sell it for. So we want to make sure we're not overpricing whatever this project is. So go on to Craigslist, or where, you know, you're probably Craigslist, um, and look and see if there's other go-karts or whatever out there like it see what they're priced for, how yours is going to compare to theirs. You know, if yours doesn't look as good, uh, maybe sell it for a little cheaper so you can, you know, snake in your other customers that were looking at that other one. But really, yeah, do your research into what you think is going to be a good price for it. And a lot of these times, if you're selling this, you know, sus uh, go-kart with off-road suspension and it has electric start, uh, in my case, and I live around San Antonio's where I did a lot of this work, uh, a lot of times they're selling for like, you know, 800, 850 bucks easily. You can sell it for that. So, you know, definitely do your research before you actually make the posting. Make sure you give details in the description of your posting. And like I said earlier, you know, list out those parts that you replaced, like carburetors or electronics, anything like that. Because people are going to want to know that. And that makes it even more attractive. Uh, make sure you have good pictures. Because, I mean, huh, one of the things that just bugs me is when people are interested in buying it and they're asking you for pictures. In my case, you know, it would be like 
9 o'clock at night and, you, and you're like, well, I can't go out and take pictures right now, so have those pictures on your phone or have them in your listing, you know, whatever, whatever you're going to need. And really, from that point on, you know, once it's up there for sale, it's just a waiting game. <laughs> a lot of times, if it's, if it's really like a sweet time, like it's in the summer or spring, there's going to be a lot of people buying go-karts and stuff like that. So that's really where a lot of your, or it's just going to be super easy to sell stuff. So, I mean, just sit around, wait, look for new projects. That's what I did. Sometimes I had, you know, two or three projects going at the same time. Um, normally, I think the whole time frame from buying the project to having it sold, you know, average is maybe like two weeks, you know. The most time is going to be spent waiting for parts to come in from Amazon or eBay because shipping takes, you know, a few days. <laughs> That's going to be the longest part of this whole process. And like I said, it's super easy. You know, you can buy stuff a lot of times just dirt cheap. You can negotiate, you know, try and, you know, haggle them down a little bit because you want to get the best deal you can. But, I mean, I'll recommend this for everybody, you know. If, you, if you're just interested in working with engines and stuff like that or even you're bored and you just want to make some money and work with your hands a little bit, but at least you can do it in a shop or, or a garage of some sort, definitely look into doing this. Uh, and even if you're not sure, we'll just log on to your local Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or whatever. Type in go-kart, ATV, UTV, stuff like that, and just see what you can find. You know, you might be surprised that you know, maybe there's a really good deal on the project out there and you should hop on it, you know. So give it a chance. Uh, if you have any questions, I definitely, you know, drop a comment down below. Uh, if, you're, if you like what you saw here and you got any questions for me, you know, either comment, DM, whatever, I don't know, YouTube stuff like that. Uh, hit a like if you want or subscribe would be really appreciated um, I'm really just kind of testing this stuff out but this is just talking from personal experience myself here so something I'd, like I said I did it for years made a lot of money off of it um, <laughs> I got a normal job now I actually I'm through college and I have a degree so I'm working in that field now but if yeah like I said any questions do not be afraid to ask I would love to answer them uh, so thanks <laughs>